the Torah tells us Yom Trua Yelachem that Rosh Hashanah is the day of Yom Trua. It's the day of the blowing of the shofar or the day of hearing of the shofar. In fact, that is a dispute among the Rambam versus Rabbeinu Tam exactly what is the nature of the mitzvah of Yom Trua, the mitzvah of shofar on Rosh Hashanah. The Rabbeinu Tam's opinion is the mitzvah is it's the tekiah, it's the actual blowing, the blasting of the shofar. And the Rambam's opinion is the mitzvah is the shmiah. In fact, the way, there are different sources in both Gemara, so the bottom line is we probably assume it's both. The question is, which is the primary, which is the secondary? We pass in that we pass in like the Rambam, that shmiah is the ikr, but that's a machokas among the Rishonim. A major nafgamina, a major practical difference between the Rambam and Rabbi Tam is, number one is, the nusach habracha. What would be the text of the bracha? If the mitzvah, like the Rambam says, is Shemiah's hearing, then it's Rishmoah kol shofar. Rabbi Tam says the text of the bracha is al tekiah shofar. So in addition to the actual fundamental change, the kiah versus Shemiah, there's a change in the prefix also. The Rambam says Lishmoa with a Lamed. Rabbi Tam says Al. Why is why is the Rabbi Tam say Al? Why not Litkoa? Why is he forced to say Al Tekiya Shofar? Why not Litkoa Shofar? So in this the Gemara and Psachim and the Rambam in Perak Yidalaf and Hilchas Brachas gives us some general rules in terms of when do we use the prefix La? versus when do we use the prefix al? So the Gemara points out in the Rambam that the first the, the first klal is is if it's a mitzvah chiyuvis. That if it's a mitzvah, there are different types of mitzvahs. There are mitzvahs that are mandatory, like putting on a tefillin in a little while. And there are other mitzvahs, let's say shechita, slaughtering the meat. If you want to eat kosher meat, then you gotta do shechita. But if you don't want to have meat, you don't have to um, slaughter. Or perhaps some say the mitzvah of gittin, of a get. There's no mitzvah to get married and then get divorced and so you can say, I fulfilled the mitzvah of get. That's not the mitzvah. The mitzvah is, if it doesn't work out, there's no longer shalom bayis and you're gonna separate and the Torah tells us, say for Christ, this is the way you have to do it. But it's not a mitzvah chiyuvis, it's more descriptive of, of how you do things. So there's, so the Rambam writes, every time it, you have to do something, it's la, and every time it's al. Another difference is, you know, the Gemara says it's always over la siyasan. But if you do a, that when you do a mitzvah, if, you make, if you're making the bracha first, then it's la, and if you're doing the bracha afterwards, it's al. Like for instance, like al natila shodayim. Besides the practical reasons, if you want to have clean hands, but we make the bracha al after we wash our hands, so then we do the al. Well, like the classic example we'll have in a couple of weeks on the yantav of sukkis, the bracha we make on lulav, al natilas lulav. Why do we make the bracha al natilas lulav? Why not with the prefix la? So that's what the Rambam points out, others the Vilna Gon, because really, as the Gemara says, midaagbe nafikle. Really, the halacha is once you pick up the fourth minim, immediately you fulfill the mitzvah. That's why we try to do different things. We turn the esrog over. Others don't pick the different different eights in the Rishonim about what you should do to try to avoid it. The Vilna Gaon says, the bottom line, we don't avoid it. And that's why he says we make al, because he says we're going to pick up the dalad minim, we're going to fulfill our mitzvah, and then we're going to be making the bracha after the mitzvah. That's something you have to do. The what? The the Dalad minim. The right, no, it's a separate rule. So there's one is right, there's one indep- well, independent thing. One is Chia versus Rishos. It's three different times. So and we'll see how they fit in. You know, if they're mutually exclusive. But and a separate principle is if you know is is or not. And um, and another clue he gives is if you're doing the mitzvah for yourself, you do what? If you're doing the mitzvah for others, you say al. So that's what the Mepharshim point out, that 
Really, it's the Rambam and Rabbi Otam Lushitaston that consistent with their view. The Rambam Shita that the mitzvah of shofar is the shmias of shofar. See, every person is doing the mitzvah themselves. The person's blowing is, is like the hextra mitzvah. He's enabling us to fulfill the mitzvah. But the bottom line is, I'm hearing it, you're hearing it. So by shmias, everyone's doing the mitzvah themselves. Therefore, hence the text is Lishmoah. When it comes to Rabbi Tam, if you hold the mitzvahs to Kia, so one person, it's like Shomea Ka'one, one person is doing it for everyone else, and therefore it's not, in, so it's not enough to say with Kola, you have to do out the Kia shofar. That's how the Mephar should point out. Not only a Machok is in the actual fundamental mitzvah of Shemir versus Kia, but that affects the Nusach HaBracha. You, you want to say? Okay. <laughs> no, the mind's thinking, but okay. I've gotten all the way to the question. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so that's one half Kamina is Shmiya versus Takiya Al versus Ra. Another famous, uh, another Naf Kamina is a famous discussion in the Rambam on the topic of Mitzvah Sriches Kavana. Do Mitzvahs require Kavana? That's a Machokas in the Gemara, Machokas Amoram, whether Mitzvah Sriches Kavana. We pass in, in general on a mitzvah in our Torah, we say mitzvah striches kavana. On a mitzvah drabana, we pass in mitzvah ein striches kavana. As I always point out, this is only a post facto machokas. You're about to put on your talis this morning, your tefillin. Even the opinion who says mitzvah ein striches kavana doesn't say you shouldn't have kavana. Everyone agrees you should have kavana before you do the mitzvah. We're talking about post facto legal question. If you did the mitzvah without the requisite kavana, would you have to repeat the mitzvah? That's the, it's a, that's the machlokas. But everyone agrees before you do the mitzvah. So that's, so what's the opinion of the Rambam? Does the Rambam pass the mitzvah striches kavana or mitzvah ena striches kavana? <coughs> so that's actually a, it's a separate whole share on this topic, but we'll just stick to one of the answers. So, because there's an apparent contradiction in the Rambam. The Rambam writes in Hilchas Chamei Tzumatzah, <laughs> If a person happens to be walking home from shul, Pesach night, Leal Pesach, and someone, mass gunmen come over and put a gun to his head and say, hey, I have the Shmura Matzah, it's the Bedat, it's the good one now, I'm, I want to make, I'm forcing you to, they shove the Matzah down the guy's throat. Does he, does he fulfill his mitzvah of Matzah? He had no kavan, he was forced. So the Rabban Paskin's Yatsa. It's based on the Gemara and Rosh Hashanah. We pass in you fulfill your mitzvah. So in this Rama, we see mitzvahs ain't as strich as kavana. Mitzvahs don't require kavana. He's yot to the mitzvah of matzah, even though he didn't have the requisite kavana. Yet the Rama and Hilchah Shofar gives us a different story. The Rama writes in Hilchah Shofar, you don't fulfill your mitzvah shofar unless the Baal Takei, the one blowing the shofar, as well as the people listing, have kavana. The one blowing the shofar has the mind everyone in there that he's fulfilling that mitzvah. And the people listening have to have in mind. So we see clear from the Rambam and Hilchus Shofar, mitzvah striches kavana. So it's an apparent contradiction in the Rambam. Does the Rambam pull mitzvah striches kavana or mitzvah ein striches kavana? So again, again, there are many answers, but we'll just focus on the one relevant to us. So the Rishonim point out in, the, in Brachas, you just did Daf Yomi, although it's been a while ago, I think it's Daf Yid Aleph. You're, you're in the Mems now. What Daf are you up to? Yes, on Daf Yud Aleph. So um, the Gemara talks about if, if a person started the bracha, he thought it was. Let's say the Gemara talks about a case. You thought you you're making a bracha on food. You thought you were making. You said Baracha Tashav Kedam Alcha Olam. You thought you were eating nuts, and then when you um, got closer, it was fish or whatever. I'm just making up the case. It was a, yeah, it was a different bracha. So the Gemara goes through the discussion whether. Could I just keep on going because it's a generic first part? Could I just finish now Shahaka or do I have to go back and start again? So the Gemara goes through the discussion and Tos says, yes, what's the difference? Mitzvahs ain't striches kavana anyway. Mitzvahs don't require kavana. What's the difference that I was thinking? As long as I did the right thing, that's the important thing. So, Rabbi, no, so, they, so they point out there's a big difference between not having kavana and having the wrong kavana. That's what Tos just points out. But Rabbi no, Yona quotes the Klal of Mitzvah Sviches Kavana, he says it depends. When do we say that if you pass a Mitzvah Sviches Kavana and you need Kavana, that's a Mitzvah which only is B'dibor, a Mitzvah which only involves talking. 
but a mitzvah which involves a maisa, a mitzvah which involves an action, we all know actions speak louder than words. In other words, if I'm eating matzah, unless I'm crazy, why am I eating matzah? I'd be eating fresh bread. Why am I shaking the four species on Gulf? Because the Torah told me to. So when you're doing an action, the action itself gives the kavanas, even if I'm not thinking about it, to account. So when, if it's a mitzvah which involves a maisa, so therefore um, I need, so, so then that covers the kavana. So they point out, according to the Rambam who holds the mitzvah shmiya, to the Rambam paskin mitzvah shmiya is kavana, because that's what, you don't have anything to show for, all you do is listings. So if you don't have the kavana, you're not yotze. But perhaps according to Rabbi Tam, that the mitzvah is the maisa, the act of blowing the shofar, so even if the person didn't have the kavana, but since it's involved the mitzvah sheish po maisa, according to, that would be a possible another nafkamin, according to Rambam, you definitely need kavana, according to Rabbi Tam, no. And perhaps the third nafkamina is the principle of mitzvah habab avera. You have a principle in Shas, in the Gemara, that you can't fulfill a mitzvah through the means in Mavera. The classic example in the Gemara is regarding um, Lulav by the four species, that the Gemara talks about that you have a stolen Lulav, can you fulfill your mitzvah with the stolen Dalin Minim? So Gemara says on the first day it's the problem for two reasons. Number one, in it, is you need it to the din of lachem. Lachachtem lachem by Yom Harishon, there's a mitzvah that one has to own it, has to own the dollar minimum. So it doesn't mean you have to, I recommend you buy your own, but if a person can't afford their own, you don't have to actually buy your own, you have to halachically have it. So if you borrow someone's dollar minimum for 30 seconds while you do it, that also constitutes lachem. But halachically speaking, legally, for the first day, it has to be belong to you in order to fulfill the mitzvah. So in addition to, if it's stolen, it doesn't belong to you, you're not yotze anyway, but in addition, the Gemara gives a reason of mitzvah habab avera. If you do a mitzvah as a means of an avera, you also don't get the mitzvah. Not only don't you get the mitzvah, but you violate the avera of Geneva gezela as well. So that's clear. If you do a mitzvah to the means of an avera, it's no good. That's the Gemara in... Um, in Sukkah Lulav HaGazel. So the Shaila is, what about a shofar HaGazel? Is there any different regarding the Hagazel? It's clear Lulav HaGazel is no good. Would it make a difference if one steals a shofar? Again, everyone agrees it's us to steal the shofar. The question is, if you're in Shul Monday morning and the only the person forgot his shofar, his shofar broke, it's not working, and the only shofar in Shul happens to be a stolen shofar. Is there, any, is there any reason to blow that shofar? Or should you say specifically, don't blow the shofar? It's a mitzvah ba bavera. So, so that depends on, on this issue because uh, the, the mitzvah, there's a whole mitzvah schinach in the beginning of in Mishnah, in Halacha Aleph, when he talks about the mitzvah puravu, he talks about the concept of whether one can fill the mitzvah puravu through a mamzer. And one has, let's, let's say, someone committed adultery and they had a child. Let's say from their own wife they had a boy and they committed adultery, they had a girl. And to fulfill Puravu, you need a boy and a girl. So would one, again, he's not condoning adultery. We're talking about post facto legally if you would get the mitzvah or not. So he gets into a whole discussion on what are the parameters of when do we say mitzvah hababa avera, uh, when don't we? So, so it depends on the nature of the mitzvah. So the Minchas Chinech case, the Minchazin writes, the mitzvah puravu isn't the actual living with your life, having the relations. The mitzvah puravu is nine months later when you have the child. It's the result oriented. So the Minchazin writes, if the mitzvah involves the mice and action, so then if, the question is at the moment I'm doing the mitzvah, am I doing an Avera? If it's at, if it's at the time I'm, let's say, by Lulav HaGazel, at the moment I'm picking up the Lulav, the Lulav screaming, don't touch me, don't pick me up, I'm stolen. You can't use me. So at the moment I'm doing the mitzvah, I'm also involved in the avera. So then we do. So then we apply the principle of mitzvah bab avera. Well, isn't there also the fact that you're required to own it? As far as we know, you're not required to own the shofar to blow it. All right, and get the shofar in a second. Right. So lulav has an additional thing of of not owning it. But I'm saying, but even let's say matz, even things which don't have the halacha. In addition to not owning it, there's a special psul 
of mitzvah, uh, which is a discussion whether it's a psul midrabanu or minatora, but independent of that. Right, by sho- so shofar will be a different reason. So therefore, when it, that's the minchas chinach's cloud, that if you, if you at, at the moment you're doing the mitzvah, you're involved in the aveira or not. So, and also if it has, and, and also they point out if, if, if you can only steal a, an object, so they point out like this, a, this would, according to the Ramam, the Ramam writes explicitly, Afal he says, even though you shouldn't, even though he doesn't recommend a shofar hagazo, but however the Rambam points out, if one uses a shofar hagazo, you are yotza, you are yotze the mitzvah even with the stolen shofar. Why are you yotze with the stolen shofar? Why not mitzvah baba veira? That's what the Rambam writes. The Rambam writes that bein bein bekol din gazo. That the, what is the, it's the Rambam with shitas and the Rambam is the mitzvah isn't. The, on the object, if, you, if according to Reno Tom, the mitzvah is the blowing of the shofar, so the physical fact of the shofar is a chafzah shal mitzvah, and then you would apply the principle of mitzvah ba ba According to Reno Tom, since the mitzvah is the blowing of the shofar, and the shofar itself is a stolen object, you would not fulfill your mitzvah, you wouldn't fulfill your mitzvah, you'd apply mitzvah ba ba like the Yushami. But according to the Rambam, that the mitzvah is the shmiya. So therefore, it's not a, it's an intangible. You can't steal sound the Rambam writes. And therefore, he says, if you're stuck and the only shofar you have is a shofar a guzzle, so the Rambam writes you Yosef. But however, he points out, even though you should, even though you should use that shofar and you fulfill your mitzvah, no bracha. You would not make a bracha on a stolen shofar because that's part of the general cloud. You don't make a bracha on something which is associated with an Avera. And therefore, like the, like the Rosh Lakish writes by Amaf Seek and Bakola, like he writes, when they, we don't make a hefzik, we don't interrupt the Baal, the, the, Baal, the Baal Kriya, the one who's relating when he's reading the Tochacha, because if you interrupt the Kriya, then the person finishing will have to make another bracha and you call up a new person. So in general, we don't make a bracha on something which involves pretty. It's like the mitzvah of the heshev as akzela. It's a mitzvah to return a stolen object, but there's no bracha because any bracha, any mitzvah which is associated with an avera, you don't make a bracha. So that's the, so the perhaps so there's a fundamental machlokes when the Torah tells us yom trua. It's very vague. What exactly is the mitzvah of yom trua? So according to the Rambam, the mitzvah is the shmia. The focus, of course, you need both, but the, but the. Primary mitzvah is the Shmiya. According to Rabbi Otam, it's the Tzakiya, my nafkamina, nafkamina. What bracha do you make? According to the Rambam, you make Lishmoa. And according to Rabbi Otam, you make the bracha on Tzakiya. And we point out not only the actual Shmiya versus Tzakiya, but the Rambam says, look, because everyone's doing it for themselves. And Rabbi Otam says, oh, because you're doing the mitzvah for everyone else. Another issue whether mitzvah speaks is Kavan. According to the Rambam, yes, because it's no Maisa. So you definitely need Kavan. According to Rabbi Otam, if your work is Rabbi Yona, so therefore you're doing a Maisa Mitzvah, so therefore you're Yosa even without Kavana. And whether the Kala Mitzvah Baba Vera applies or not, because according to the Rambam, there is no Chefs to show Mitzvah, the Mitzvah is the Shmiya, so we don't, you can't steal sound, so therefore you're Yosa even with the Shofar Agazo. But according to Rabbi Otam, that you it would be a problem. And just to conclude, that's why they point out that the, why, is, why over here by Shofar does he say you shouldn't have um, that? You, we, there's no halach of shamei kaona, because that's what the mafarshim point out. The one should have a mind during the hearing the call shofar that you want everyone to be even at the time. That there's not even not you don't want one person. You want to be judged as part of the klal, as part of the tzibur, and therefore everyone's equal. If the mitzvah shmiya, so we're all the same. It's not even the person blowing doesn't have any advantage over you, except incidentally he's letting you perform, but we're all equal. And that's what the Isha Shunam has said to um, yeah. Elisha, that Anochi and Rock, she doesn't want, he, he wants to be judged among the Klai Yisrael. So that's what we should have in mind besides all the other things in Shofar to be Zohar Bedin. They want to feel that we're part of the, we're part of the Klai, we're part of the Tzibor, and that's what we should have in mind.